August 28th. We are on August 28th lesson. Welcome back to Study the Bible in One Year. My name is Janice. Please be sure to subscribe, share this out if you can, and hopefully you guys are really enjoying your being blessed. So again, we're on August 27th. Did I say 28th? August 27th lesson, okay? August 27th lesson from Job 23, Job 23 to 27, and Second Chronicles chapter 1. Congratulations, you've just finished reading another book, which is 1 Corinthians. So we're going to pick up in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 12, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. I am reading from the New Living Translation Version. It might sound a little bit differently, but we will end up in the same place. So 2 Corinthians 1, verse 12. We can say with confidence, think about the word confidence, what does that mean? Trust, assurity, right? We can say with confidence and a clear conscience that we have lived with a God-given holiness. What is holiness? The mind of Christ, doing what he say, acting like he say, loving like he say. It's not long dress and a dolly on your head, okay? That's not what holiness is. God-given holiness and sincerity in all of our dealings. We have depended on God's grace, not on our own human wisdom. That is how we have conducted ourselves before the world and especially toward you. Our letters have been straightforward and there is nothing written between the lines and nothing you can't understand. I hope someday you will fully understand us. Even if you don't understand us now, then on, then on the day when the Lord Jesus returns, you will be proud of us in the same way we are proud of you. Verse 15, 2 Chron Corinthians uh, 1. 1. Since I was so sure for your understanding and trust, I wanted to give you a double blessing by visiting you twice. First on my way to Macedonia, and again when I return from Macedonia, then you could send me on my way to Judea. You may be asking why I changed my plan. Do you think I make my plans carelessly? Do you think I am like people of the world who say yes when they really mean no? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you does not waver between yes and no. You know, back in the day when I was coming up, they say your word is your bond, okay? For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one whom Silas, Timothy, and I preached to, to you and as God's ultimate yes. He always does what he says for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with the resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascend to God for his glory. Amen. So when you hear something that you agree with and is a blessing in your life, say uh, amen. Verse 21, 2 Chronicles Keep saying Chronicles. God, no, we're not trying to go back to Chronicles, y'all. Woo, that was a big book, wasn't it? Second, Second Corinthians 1, uh, 21. It is God who enable us. How many of you know that it is God who has enabled us along with you to stand firm for Christ? He has commissioned us and he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit on our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. Now, I call upon God as my witness that I am telling the truth. The reason I didn't return to Corinth was to spare you from severe rebuke. Okay, Pastor Paul was going to rebuke him. But that you do that. But that does not mean we want to dominate you by telling you how to put your faith into practice, right? We live by faith, not by works, okay? So we need to put our faith to practice. For, for, for example, I am believing God that I'm, I'm a number one best-selling author. So how do I put that in practice? First of all, you need to write a book, okay? <laughs> Let's start right there. Okay, we want to work together with you so you will be full of joy, for it is by your own faith that you stand firm. Second Corinthians chapter 2. So I decided.
decided that I would not bring my grief with another painful visit. For if I cause your grief, who will make me glad? Okay. So the Apostle Paul. Oop, oop, oop. Wait a minute, y'all. My ear, my ear's acting funny. So the Apostle Paul wanted to know, like, you know, we're not trying to bring you no grief. Sorry, guys. Okay. Certainly not someone I grieve. That is why I wrote to you as I did, so that when I do come, Hmm. When I do come, he's saying, I won't be grieved by the way the very ones who ought to give me the greatest joy. In other words, they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. Okay, surely you all know that my joy comes from you, from you being joyful. I wrote the letter in great anguish with a troubled heart and many tears. I did want to grieve. I didn't want to grieve you, but I wanted to let you know how much I love i have for you okay verse five second corinthians 2 5. i am not overstating it when i say that the man who caused all the trouble hurt all of you more than he hurt me most of you oppose him and that was punishment enough now however it is time to forgive and comfort him otherwise he may be overcome by discouragement so i urge you now to reaffirm your love to him so something was going on in the church okay Something was going on, and I'm not sure if the if it's the one we read last week about the man who was living in adultery, and they discom they um what's the word discommunicated him or something like that. Verse two, Second Corinthians two two nine. I wrote to you as I did to test you and see if you would fully comply with my instructions. When you forgive this man, I forgive you too, and when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven. I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit, so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. All right? Flip on back over to Brother Job. Brother Job. Brother Job. We're more than halfway through Job. I think Job has 40 chapters in it, and we're on Job 23. We're going to read Job 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Jesus. That's a lot of reading. But come on, y'all. Let's read. Job 23. Then Job spoke again. And, you know, I'm just kind of shocked about how his friends was talking. These were his friends, y'all. These weren't his enemies. These were his friends that was talking to him like that. Okay. So Job 23. Then Job spoke again. My complaint today is still a bitter one. And I try hard not to groan loud. I only knew where to find God. I, if I only knew where to find God, I would go to his court. I would lay out my case and present my arguments. Then I will listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. Would he use his great power to argue with me? No, he would give me fair hearing. Uh, honest people can reason with him. So I would be forever acquitted by my judge. I go east, but he's not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north, for he is hidden. I look to the south, but he is concealed. Did we not read? What book was that? Was it Psalms? He said, if I make my head, my, if I fly on the wings of the eagle to the uttermost parts of the earth, behold it, he's there. If I make my bed in hell, he's there. I think it was Psalm. Okay. But he knows where I am going, and when he tests me, verse 10 of Job 23, when he tests me, I will come out as pure gold, for I have stayed on God's path. This is a, that's a prophetic word the Lord gave me, that right now the church is going through a refining. Okay? A refining. I have followed his ways and not turned aside. I have not departed from his commands, but have treasured his words more than daily food. But once he has made his decision, who can change his mind? Whatever he wants to do, he does. So he will do to me whatever he has planned. He controls my destiny. 
Circle that. Okay, read that. No wonder I am so terrified in his presence. When I think of it, terror grips me. God has made me sick at heart. The Almighty has terrified me. Darkness is all around me. Thick, impenetrable darkness is everywhere. My God, Job 24. Why doesn't the Almighty bring the wicked to judgment? Why must the godly wait for him in vain? Evil people steal lame by moving the boundary marks. They steal livestock and put them in their own pastures. They take the orphan's donkey and demand the widow's ox as security for a loan. The poor are punished off the path. The needy must hide together for safety. Like wild donkeys in the wilderness, the poor must spend all their time looking for food, searching even in the desert for Food for food for their children. Y'all know that's not even good. That's not even the will of God. Amen. That is not the will of God. Hello, single ladies. Be careful who you choose. So be your husband. Okay. This is my book. That's the guys. Available on Amazon. <clears throat> okay, verse 6, Job 24. The, they harvest a the field they do not own, and they glean in the vineyards of the wicked. All night they lie naked in the cold, uh, without clothing or covering. They are soaked up mountain showers, and they huddle against the rocks for what one of a home. The wicked snatch a widow's child from her breast. My God. Taking the baby as security for loan. Mm. The poor must go about naked without any clothing. They harvest food for others while they themselves are starving. They press out olive oil without being allowed to taste it. And they tread in the winepress as they suffer from thirst. They ground, the groans of dying rise from the city and the wounded cry for help. Yet God ignores their moaning. Wicked people rebel against the light. This is verse 12. Uh, they refuse to acknowledge its way or stay in its paths. The murderer rises in the early dawn to kill the poor and needy. At night, he is a thief. The, adult, the adulterer waits for the twilight, saying, no one will see me then. He hides his face so no one will know him. You are sneaking in these people's homes late at night. Mm. <laughs> Verse 16, thieves uh, break in the house at night and sleep in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say nothing about something that's going on in our, in our country at this time. This is, let me give you all the date. This is uh, August 29, 2020. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. This is what the Bible is saying. Thieves break into houses at night and sleep in the daytime. Stealing things that don't belong to you. You didn't work for it. They are not acquainted with the light. The black night is their morning. They all, they, they ally themselves with the terrors of the darkness. Verse 18. But they disappear like foam down a river. Everything they own is cursed, and they are afraid to enter their own vineyards. They grave consume sinners, just as drought and heat consume snow. Uh, their own mothers will forget them. Maggots will find them sweet to eat. No one will remember them. Wicked people are broken like a tree in the storm. They cheat the woman who has no son to help her. They refuse uh, to help the needy uh, widow. Verse 22, God is power. God in his power drags away the rich. That is not an excuse for you to say you're not, you should be poor. We just read about what, about the poor. You can't even feed your children. That's a shame, okay? Like I say, rich to me, rich, you don't have to be a multimillionaire. You can provide for your basic needs. I have a little something left over for say for rainy day, girl, you're rich, okay? They may rise high, but they have no assurance of life. They may be allowed to live in security, uh, but God is always watching them. And though they are great now, in a moment, they will be gone like all others. 
cut off like heads of grain. Can anyone claim otherwise? Who can prove me wrong? Chapter 25. Chapter 25 is a little one. So that maybe that's why we're reading four chapters. Uh, chapter 25, Joel 25. Then Bildad the Shuite replied, God is powerful and dreadful. He enforces peace in the heavens. Who is able to count his heaven, heavenly army? Doesn't his light shine on all the earth? How can a mortal be innocent before God? Can anyone born of a woman be pure? God is more gl glorious than the moon. He shines brighter than the stars. In comparison, people are maggots. We mortals are mere worms. Job 26. Job 26. Job speaks again. How you have helped me powerless. How have you saved the weak? How you have enlightened my stupidity. What wise advice you have offered. Where have you gotten all these why sayings? Whose spirit speaks through you? Mm -hmm. There's a spirit that speaks through people. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying nothing. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 of Job 26. The dead tremble. Those who live beneath the waters. The underworld is naked in God's presence. The place of destruction is uncovered. God stretches the northern sky over empty space and hangs the earth on, uh, on nothing. He wraps the rain in his thick clouds, and the clouds don't burst with the weight. He covers the face of the moon. My God Almighty. Woo, love. Verse, okay, I don't even know what verse to cut off. Shrouding it with his clouds. He created the horizon when he separated the waters. He set the boundary between day and night. The foundations of heaven tremble. They shudder at his rebuke. By his power, the sea grew calm. By his skull, he crushed the great sea monster. We read about that in chapter one or chapter two. Uh, Leviathan. Go back and read and listen to that lesson, okay? His spirit made the heavens beautiful. And his power pierced the gliding serpent. These are just the beginning of all that he does. Merely a whisper of his power. Who then can comprehend the thunder of his power? Talk about how great and how good God is. Joel 27. Moving on. Joel 27. Joel 27. Joel continues speaking. I vow by the living God who has taken away my rights, by the Almighty who has embittered my soul, as long as I live, while I have breath from God, my lips will speak no evil. How many of y'all can say that? That no matter what you go through, your lips will speak no evil. Uh, and my tongue will speak no lies. That's verse 4 of Job 27. I will never concede that you are right. I will defend my integrity until I die. I will maintain my innocence without wavering. My conscience is clear for as long as I live. So go back to Job chapter 1 where we read what? In all that happened to Job. He kept his integrity. Okay, verse 7 of Joel 27. May my enemy be punished like the wicked, my adversary, like those who do evil. For what hope do the godless have when God cuts them off and takes away their life? Will God listen to their cry when the trouble comes upon them? Can they take delight in the Almighty? Can they call to God at any time? I will teach you about God's power. I will not conceal anything concerning the Almighty. But you have seen all this, yet you say all these useful things to me. Y'all, these were Job's friends. They came to encourage him. They have not said now one encouraging thing to Job. Verse 13. This is what, this is Joel 27, 13. This is what the wicked will receive from God. This is their inheritance from the Almighty. 
They may have many children, but the children will die in war or starve to death. The blood of Jesus. Those who survive will die of a plague and not even their widows will mourn for them. Evil people may have piles of money and may store away mounds of clothing, but the righteous will wear that clothing and the innocent will divide the money. That is not an excuse for you to be broke, poor, busted, and disgusted. You heard what they said about people hungry can't feed your kids. By the way, if you're hungry, can't feed your kids, please go go to social services. Look up on your in your city. Go to social service. Apply for food stamps. Okay, apply for there's been government benefits out there if you're not able to feed. I had to tell somebody that. Look it up, girl. Okay, verse 18, Joel 27. The wicked build houses as fragile as a spider's web. Think about a spider web. You just take a broom or a piece of paper out and just do that. Gone. Okay. As flimby as a shelter made of branches. The wicked go to bed rich, but wake to find that all their wealth is gone. That's not an excuse for you not to have put something away. Keep telling y'all. Terror overwhelms them like a flood, and they are blown away in the storms of the night. The east wind carries them away, and they are gone. It sweeps them away. It whirls down on them without mercy. They struggle to flee from its power, but everyone jeers at them and mocks them. My God. Let's go on over to Psalm, Psalm 41. Psalm 41. <clears throat> Again, we are on um, uh, uh, August 27th. Okay, Psalm 21. 41. Psalm 41. All the joys of those who are kind to the poor. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The, the Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. Come on, y'all. Shout for me because I can't get up. Shout, 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 shout. Okay. Verse 4 of Psalm 41. Oh, Lord, I prayed, have mercy on me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. But my enemies say nothing but evil about me. How soon will he die and be forgotten? They ask, they visit me as if they were my friends. Sound like Job, don't it? Uh, but all they, while they gather gossip, and when they leave, they spread it everywhere. All who hate me whisper about me. Imagine in the words, he has some fatal disease. They say he will never get out of that bed. Even my best friend and I, the one I trusted completely, the one who shared my food, has turned against me. Lord, have mercy on me. Make me well again so I can pay them back. I know you are pleased with me, uh, for you have not let my enemies triumph over me. You have preserved my life. Come on, church, because I am innocent. You have brought me into your presence forever. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. And amen. And amen. Verse 22, Proverbs 22. We're moving, moving. Verse 5 and 6. Corrupt people walk away. A cor corrupt people walk a thorny, treacherous road. My God. Whoever values life will avoid it. Don't go down that way if you value your life, okay? Direct your children on the path, and when they're older, they will not leave it. King James says, train up a child in the way they will go. They should go. And when they're old, they will not depart. And then the church, all church folks used to add, but even if they depart, they will come back. So if you're listening, your babies have departed. You call them home in the name. Call them home. Call their names. Stand at the door. Speak to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And call them home. Call my home, Jonathan, Joshua, uh, Billy. Come on home. Especially if they, let, they don't let the, 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 the Lord call them back to Jesus. All right, y'all. That's it for this lesson. Stay with me a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a few more minutes. Stay with me if you can, okay? Thumbs up if you can. Share this out. Just stay with me just a little bit more, okay? Thank you, babes.
Hey y'all, I'm back. I just gave the baby a bath, wash his hair, brush his teeth, and daddy dresses him for bed. Alright, thank you guys. I'm gonna um I'm gonna um I think I'm gonna work on my book maybe for another hour. Another hour or so. All right, booze. I love y'all. Thank you. Um, let me wait another minute. Thank you for uh, studying with me today. Hope you guys were blessed by the lesson. All right, babes, I'm going to run. Oof, I must think I'm going to stay up another hour and work on this book for now. I need to get this book done. I have to get it to the format. I should be back. Ooh, this is the end of August, Lord Jesus. September is next week. Ugh, she's back from vacation. It's not ready. I got to send it to her. I got I to finish it this week. I got to finish proofing it and sending it to her. All right, babes. I love y'all. I'm going to run. Bye. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up. Remember my books on Amazon. All righty then. Bye. Love you. Thank you.